Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! It's time for another video. Welcome guys uh, to Street Smart Swing. Jamin Jackson here, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. I am a huge fan of Lindy Hop and I'm super excited to watch another Jack and Jill competition. As you guys may or may not know, but Lindy Hop is like a huge stadium full of people. But I'd say 80 to 90% of those people are fanatics who love this art form. And 10% are the people who are actually on the field playing the game, who are actually inventing new ideas and preserving the old ideas with professionalism. And so I'm kind of both. I'm someone who's actually out on the field, but I'm also a crazy fan. And I'm looking for the new dancers in this generation who are going to inspire dancers 300 years from now and uh, in a way that is creative, but also respectful to the art form. So I'm gonna look at this event. It looks like it's Amber Swing, never heard of it before. I'm not sure if it's an American event or someplace else, but I'm gonna be looking to see if I can find some dancers that are fantastic craftsmen, but also inspiring artists. And we're gonna dive deeper into what I mean by that and how I actually judge this competition after I take a look at it. And here we go. All right, let's do it. Looks like it's in a, let's see, church. Nice. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five couples. Ooh, the rhythm section, they're killing it. This band is great. If anybody knows the name of this band, let me know. I like collecting music. Yeah, I like that Charleston move. Whoever's in this blue shirt, I like that. I like she's got a black dress on too. Hand to hand. Oh, that's good. Okay, let's let's see what happens. I'm getting nervous. Why am I nervous? Bro, I'm not so even in let's it. Let's get on with this thing. So, uh, <laughs> I'm playing this song, like a very specific song. How about something like 180? Yeah. You same, with that? same tempo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. No beat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're deciding okay. on the tape, the tempo. So, All right. You guys are gonna dance. It's gonna be very simple. First, we'll have an intro. So the guys will count you in. Then each couple dances a full chorus, then half a chorus. Then we're gonna drum solo. Then we're gonna no skate. And I've got this strapping young lad <laughs> to count the guys in. You may know him from somewhere. Man, he's getting a lot of oh, cheers nice. and he's just counting. <laughs> That's good.
think I've seen enough. I know the break's going to get a lot of cheers. They're going to do some fun things, some more silly things. But I've seen what I was looking for. This is amazing. Judging all these years, I can, I can literally look at one round and see if I can judge that, uh, that small objective part of Lindy Hop, which we call technique uh, or control. I like to use the word control because really it is that one physical thing that every style has to do or we won't be able to do Lindy Hop. And so it, it appears for me that most of the dancers, I'd say four out of the five couples, were pretty solid on that control. That part is make it or break it. You either have it or you don't. So I don't over critique technique um, because it should not be a big deal. It really is. Can the leader set up something for the follower? Can the follower respond to that? And it looks somewhat orderly in a sense of call and response and not just both people moving at the same time. And I really can't see that clear channel of order. And so most of the dancers had that, to my surprise. Usually it's pretty clear who has it and who doesn't, but I would say four out of the five of these couples were pretty solid. So my third place position was hard. My third place position was hard. And so in doing so, you know, being able to get those four couples that I have in my mind to be ordered in the top three, I have to go right into the timing and then I have to go into the issues of creativity. So let's talk about timing. Since four of them had control, I have to now go to who, who elevated the music at certain points where I could clearly see what they were doing uh, in the music visually, right? And it's usually the fourth eight count uh, that most dancers tend to emphasize a little bit more. It's that big transition before the phrase starts again. And I think most, again, most of these couples were able to emphasize that. So then how do I judge timing? I got to get more into the details of how they did it. And that is a bunch of subjective opinion. So for me, I'm just going to give you my opinion of who I liked since most of them could do control and most of the four could do some of the timing. So let's get down to it. Obviously, when it's this competitive, I'm looking for the one who's taking more risk. I'm first going to be looking for that person who's going to try to do something different with the timing and the control. And in this case, it looks as if this competition was supposed to be strictly a Jack and Jill. And some of these dancers were do, I, I, it almost looks like if, as if they were partners because I know many of the moves that they led could be led and followed more easily if you worked with that person. Not to say you couldn't lead and follow those moves at all, but my eye, looking at it as a judge, can see, wait a minute, they've practiced that before. Now, I can't say that, you know, with 100% clarity, but I can see, yeah, she kind of knew that that was coming because the energy that was given to her before didn't follow through. She just kind of like stopped and prepared and then they did kind of some kind of rap thing, which was pretty dope when I think about what they were able to do. But in my mind for third place, I got to, if it's a Jack and Jill, I got to think about the filter of what can you do without it being choreographed too much. So... I take off points for that. So the, the, the couple who actually had some cool stuff. Now, if they would have led it and followed it, and I know that it wasn't lead, if I know it wasn't choreographed, they would be ranked higher for me. But because they had some really, really cool sets and they had the control, I'm going to give the very first couple that came out third place in my book. They got third place. Now, if I know 100%, 100% that it wasn't choreographed, of course, they would be a little bit higher. But because of that, I saw some things that said they probably are partners and they probably did some choreography. Just for me, I just, I don't, it's too easy. Everybody can do choreography, right? Everybody can get the crowd to go, yay! But it it's somewhat hollow because it wasn't actually something that was real and vulnerable where both parties don't know if it's going to work out. So third place for me was the couple that went out first. I think he had like a blue, like a navy blue and she had black on and like she had some kind of like tan dress which i i know it's like a leopard dress yeah i loved what they had to do i loved it and i liked some of the charleston variations that they chose to do in fact many of those charleston variations were extremely creative 
in terms of like how they use the energy. They didn't just do Charleston variations to the same amount of energy. They would do something and then speed it up a little bit and then slow back down and get into Charleston. That's the kind of stuff I like. That's that's higher level thinking with the technique, not just using a certain level of energy the entire time, but kind of diversifying how the energy is distributed between the leader and the follower. That's next level thinking, and I like that. And for me, they get third place. Now, the second place couple, this was tough. This was really tough for me. And this, again, goes down to something very subjective because the objective part of Lindy Hop, they were both able to do. I can't even point out any flaws in it. Really, it's just once you have that part, it's super, super easy to become homogenous and everybody just kind of focuses on the technique a whole lot. So I don't. I don't like judging that way, right? So they had it, but also they had some ways of moving in the slot where both of them are facing each other and coming together. They weren't rotating around the partner. They were doing some unique shapes as they were doing what people would call like a Suzy Q. I'm sorry, not a Suzy Q, but the sugar push, right? Some people call that movement a sugar push. And they were doing some different things. I've seen them, but they were doing it in time together that made it really unique. And I liked it. And I thought their control was solid enough that I could see them saying, see them being in the top three, but also it was raw enough. I like to use that word raw, meaning that it doesn't look too formulaic. It was still raw enough to make me want to pay attention to say, okay, I don't know what's going to happen next, right? And that was a differentiating factor between the couple having third and this couple. And this couple, for me, uh, they their, their second place, they were the ones that had, uh, he had a brown, it looks like it's a brown jacket. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, he had a brown jacket and bow tie and she had like a pink jacket. Is it like a, is it pink? I think it might be auburn. She had like an auburn dress on. I liked them. I really liked them. I, I could see the energy level was the same when they were moving. I didn't see the leader just like trying to do too much to create energy for their partner. A lot of times that happens where the leader is like starting an idea and it's clearly being distributed to the follower so we can actually see what's going, the fruition of that idea. I don't see them getting in the way of that. And a lot of times leaders get in the way of that. And they didn't do that. They actually were matching each other perfectly uh, with the energy, but also visually so I could appreciate what was happening. So they had incredible control, but they also had some really good timing, but I liked the shapes. I really liked that they were doing different things with that slot to make it stand out. And plus they had some, they had some moves that were familiar, but they were done differently. Um, I won't back it up to just go over it, but that's what I remember on seeing it. And so Typically, when I'm in a place physically to judge, I don't have the luxury of going back to view it, and nor will I do that here since I do have that luxury. I just want to give my first reaction to it. And so for me, they got second place. Now, the first place couple, and I almost thought they were going to be first place on their first set. And what I liked about this couple is they had the most rawness, the most uh, vulnerable look where I could tell the leader is leading and the follower is hesitant and then they follow something and I still see this sense of what's going to happen. They had the control, obviously. It wasn't so vulnerable and raw where it looked sloppy, like I couldn't tell what was happening, but they had all three of those elements together. They did a couple of things that were not 100% original, but they were placed differently. They embellished the shape of it a little bit like... It was a fresh way of moving throughout that shape. And that's just as good as enough for me as something original if they had those other two things balanced with it, like the timing and they had the control part. So this couple had all three. It was a perfect balance of all three. I didn't see a whole bunch of choreography. They actually looked like their partners in real life. For whatever reason, I could see that the energy levels matched. I liked them the best. It's my big fat opinion. It's all subjective once you get past those three things. And even those three things for a lot of people aside from the control part of it, the actual technique of how does it look like one is transferring energy to the other and does that look natural? Sometimes people will call that subjective, but I don't. I think that's the thing that makes all of the different styles work together. And so for me, the couple that I got first is the, the follower that had the blue floral dress. She had like, it's blue and like purple and then she has like a blue shirt on and he had like a navy blue um, like blazer with tan pants. He had like a peach little tie. 
they were the best to me for those reasons. I like them. I don't know who their names are. Um, and I, I encourage you, if they're teachers, I encourage you to take some lessons from them because this is how I got good at Lindy Hop. I, I was a professional dancer. I didn't know if there was a Lindy Hop University. At the time, Frankie Manning had died like one year before I came to the month. And I was like, what, how do I get good at this? So I sought out some of the teachers just to ask them, you know, what do I need to do? And they gave me some really good advice. And I'm sure if you find some of these couples that are dancing, they may be teachers in their area. So take some classes. It will really help you if you love social dancing. So that's my top three, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I don't get a chance to talk a lot about uh, how I judge, but I like doing that on this channel. I want you guys to know a little bit what's going on in my mind aside from just coming up with cool moves and sharing those online. Um, I want to give you my judging uh, opinion because I'm also a professional dancer and a professional judge. So there you have it. That's my opinion, guys. Who do you think should have won this competition? You might have a different thing that you were looking for. You might think that, hey, um, you know, judging by those three things isn't good enough. You might like to see the, the crowd's reaction, right? Um, that's you. I think you are got, got a good point. The, the crowd reacting is one thing. Um, so who do you think? Let me know in the comments section. If you guys are wanting to get better at like doing the social dancing, I'm not saying the choreographed part, but just figuring out how to fix yourself while you're social dancing because not everybody can always travel and take classes and things like that. Um, I encourage you to check out some of our courses below. We got about 20 to 30 different courses so you can kind of see our approach to Lindy Hop. You know, obviously we try to create new moves every single week. Um, so that you're always being challenged with how simple that technique can be to manipulate it different ways. So if you are into that kind of stuff and you want to get good fast and not take like years to do it, check out those classes. Anyways, guys, happy new year to you. This is the last day before New Year's Eve and I'm super excited to go hang out with my wife. We're going to go out and watch my sister perform. She's alive. Uh, she's got a live performer. She's an incredible artist uh, here in my hometown in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so we've got an Airbnb. We got a babysitter. And we're going to go out and party like we were in college. It's going to be fun. And so with that said, guys, you guys have a happy new year. Have a safe time. Let me know what you thought in the comment section. And I will see you in the next reaction video in 2020.